He smells the stockings given to him by another woman with Elvis, Fiennes' knowledge. Jonathan even peeked out the window in the middle of the night to see the exciting and heartbreaking scene. But the reason he did it was to pursue true love. Three years ago, Jonathan meets Sarah at a Christmas gift store. They both wanted to buy the only pair of black silk gloves they had. After an awkward stare down, Jonathan was a gentleman and gave the black silk gloves to Sarah. To express her gratitude, she invited Jonathan to have dessert. Sarah's smile instantly captivated Jonathan. Before they said goodbye, Jonathan took the initiative to ask for Sarah's contact information. But Sarah just kissed him on the cheek and said, Merry Christmas. She then gets into a cab and leaves. Jonathan felt lost and angry. Not only did he not get the gloves, but he didn't know the woman's name either. Jonathan walked to the subway in frustration, but then he suddenly felt like something was missing from his neck. He returned to the dessert store in dismay, but then he saw this scene. It turns out that Sarah's gloves were also left here. The two of them smiled at each other. Serendipity is really so fantastic. Jonathan asks Sarah to go do something with him. Sarah said she would do whatever she wanted, but Jonathan is not that kind of person. They went to the ice rink and had a great time telling each other stories. Sarah accidentally fell on the ice. Jonathan was distressed. He even treated her wound himself. Jonathan said that the freckles on Sarah's arm looked like a fairy constellation. Then he took out a pen and drew the constellations while telling the story. Snowflakes fell on Sarah's hair. Jonathan gently brushed them away. An ambiguous atmosphere began to spread. Jonathan slowly approached, but he only kissed Sarah's arm as a gentleman. When they said goodbye again, Sarah left her name and phone number. Jonathan was overjoyed, but then a car sped by. Sarah's note was blown away by the wind. Jonathan was anxiously begging her to write again, but Sarah felt that it was fate and refused Jonathan's request. Jonathan wouldn't give up and chased after her. Sarah couldn't stand it so she pulled out a bill and asked Jonathan to write his name and number on the bill. But the next moment Sarah turned around and ran to the stall and spent the money. She said when the bill is back in my hand again, I'll call you. Jonathan said reluctantly that it wasn't fair at all. Sarah listened and pulled out another book. I'll leave my contact information in the book. I'll sell it to a second-to-hand vendor tomorrow. If you find the book, it means we're really meant to be. But Jonathan thought the odds of that were too slim. Sarah paused for a moment and then suddenly dragged him into a hotel. Jonathan was caught off guard and said, Aren't we going to fast? But the awkward part is, Sarah pressed both elevators and asked him to choose a floor. If we can meet on the same floor, we'll be together tonight. The moment the elevator closed she threw a glove at Jonathan and said her name was Sarah. Sarah pressed the 23rd floor with her hand and Jonathan panicked and chose the 23rd floor. When the elevator went up to the 14th floor, a spoiled brat got on the elevator. He did not only press all the floor buttons of the elevator. The spoiled brat made a face at Jonathan with arrogance. His father didn't stop him even when he saw how rude he was. Jonathan was helpless. He remembered his promise with Sarah and had to put up with it. But the number of people on the elevator was increasing. He finally made it to the 23rd floor. But Sarah, who had been waiting for him, had already left. He takes the elevator down and misses her again. He chased her out of the hotel but still miss her. And so the relationship vanished. Years later, Jonathan had a new girlfriend and was about to get married. But Jonathan can't stop thinking about Sarah. But how could he find her in such a big city? Jonathan remembered that Sarah had written her phone number in a book. So every time he passed by the bookstore, he subconsciously looked at the book, but the result was the same every time. Jonathan reluctantly found his best friend and started looking for Sarah together. But it's a needle in a haystack, and that day he accidentally found the gloves that Sarah gave him. The gloves still had the shopping receipt inside. Jonathan went to the gift store that year and hoped that the clerk could help him check the user's address, but the clerk said he was too busy. He hadn't finished his sales. Jonathan understandably picked out a random purple tie, but it wasn't enough. So he used his personal money to buy a purple suit. After he signed the bill, the clerk said that the information was all gone because the computer had been replaced. Jonathan grabbed him by the collar and scolded him. The clerk was scared and said, the warehouse has the original backup data. So they finally found the place where Sarah used to live after a lot of trouble, but she had moved out a long time ago. There was nothing left behind. The clues they'd finally gotten were gone. Jonathan was devastated. He decided not to look anymore. He thought all the signs were a sign that it was all wishful thinking. Jonathan returns to the hotel and begins the wedding rehearsal with his fiance Hallie. But then a stranger showed up at the rehearsal. Hallie introduces her college roommate, Courtney, to Jonathan. But Jonathan couldn't have known. Courtney and Sarah have a close relationship. After the wedding rehearsal, Hallie gave him a gift. 
He opened it and saw that it was the book he was looking for. Prehensively, he opens the title page and finds that the handwriting is clearly visible in the book. It turns out that his fiance had given him a message from another woman. Jonathan follows this last clue and finds Sarah's address with a friend. Jonathan arrived at his destination and saw a scene he shouldn't have seen. Jonathan saw it and then gave up completely. At that moment, he realized that the woman he was chasing was just a dream. Jonathan went to the old ice rink and found a woman's jacket on a seat. Jonathan sits on the ice and reminisces about the encounter he had three years ago. He takes out the black silk glove and puts it on, then takes it off and throws it away. At that moment, the sky started to snow again. He simply lay down until everyone had left the place, but then something fell from the sky. It turned out that it was another black silk glove, and Sarah, who hadn't been seen for years, appeared behind Jonathan. What the hell is going on here? Jonathan pressed the gum he had been chewing for seven days onto the back of a chair. 901 days later, the gum happened to be on Sarah's hand. But that was just the beginning of their relationship. When they met three years ago, Jonathan wrote his contact information on a bill. But Sarah spent the money right away. She promised that if the bill came back to her, she would call him. Because that's what serendipity is. A few years went by, Sarah has a new boyfriend. But she still thinks about that serendipity from time to time. It turns out that Sarah's boyfriend is very romantic on the surface. But he never cared about Sarah's feelings. His new engagement ring didn't fit her at all. But he still tried to shove her hand into the ring. He gave up his planned honeymoon for his job. In the rain, Sarah saw the movie posters on the wall and remembered Jonathan from three years ago. Jonathan once said that Sarah was very much like the lead actress of the movie. Since Sarah believes in destiny, she felt bad. The next day Sarah decided to bring her friends and experience fate again. If she could run into Jonathan again this time, then she would really marry Jonathan and as luck would have it, Jonathan was also looking for Sarah. A husky stalks Jonathan in the middle of a busy street. He turned around and tripped the clown handing out flyers next to Sarah. And Sarah happens to find Jonathan's name on the flyer. She saw a familiar figure at Jonathan's workplace. Frustrated, Sarah sat her on a bench. She reached out and touched Jonathan's gum standing on the back of the chair. She had just gotten into a cab. Jonathan appeared right behind her. Fate seems to be playing tricks on them. Courtney urged Sarah to accept the truth. But just as they were leaving, Courtney was about to pull out a piece of change. The rest of the money is for the tip. The bill that was slipped into the wallet was the same one that had Jonathan's contact information on it. Will Sarah find the bill? Courtney runs into her college roommate, Hallie, outside the hotel elevator. Hallie warmly invites them to the wedding rehearsal and Sarah has to go upstairs to call her boyfriend. But she didn't know that Hallie was Jonathan's girlfriend. They just miss seeing each other again. Sarah came upstairs to find her boyfriend looking for her. They went to the park. She told him the story of the horoscope. She took off her jacket and threw it on a bench. Then she got up and looked at the skating rink. She also realized it was time to say goodbye to that marriage. The next day Sarah returned alone. Her boyfriend left early and Courtney was staying for Hallie's wedding. The stewardess came by to sell headphones. Sarah found out she had Courtney's wallet. She took $5 out of it and handed it to the attendant. But then she was surprised to find that it was the same bill that had Jonathan's contact information on it. It was unbelievable. Sarah grabbed the bill and got off the plane. She found out Jonathan's address and couldn't wait to find him. But then she heard from a neighbor that Jonathan was getting married. All Sarah could think about was Jonathan. She rushes to the hotel. Why is it too late? Sarah was surprised to find out that Jonathan had canceled the wedding this morning. The sty was filled with snowflakes. Jonathan, who had canceled the wedding, was pillowed on the jacket he had just found on the bench. He was lying alone on the ice, and then a black silk glove fell from the sky. That's right, it was thrown by Sarah. They were lucky to meet again after a long time apart. It's the same woman, the same ice rink, but the difference was, this time, fate had tied them together.